This is One on One. We are pleased to welcome Adam Scribner. He is a science professional development specialist and Mercedes McKay is the deputy director at the Center for Innovation in Engineering and Science Education at Stevens Institute of Technology. Both of you, in fact, are from Stevens Institute. Yes, You're here thank to talk you. about something that's fascinating. Our friends at PSCNG were talking to us about this thing called water, water bottoms. Botics. What is it and what are you doing with it and why does it matter? <laughs> Water Botics is a problem-based curriculum developed at Stevens whose primary goal is to interest and engage students in science, engineering, and computer programming. It's targeted to middle and high school students, uh, students who are both in traditional classroom settings and also in out-of-school learning environments. Uh, teams of students, they work together, they design, build, program, test, and redesign robots that are made out of Lego components. Well, robots made out of? Lego Legos. components. Legos. Stuff that kids are using every day. Why Legos? Uh, Legos are intuitive. Uh, students like building with them. They're used to them, the familiarity. Uh, but more importantly, it allows for students to rapidly prototype, to design and build quickly. Um, and that allows them to you know, work together in groups and make sure that uh, they can build the robots the way they want. The term water botics, where does it come from? Well, it's a term that we coined for the name of this curriculum, and it really is reflective of the fact that the robots are working underwater. This is a really novel experience for students, um, even those who may have been using traditional land-based robotics programs. Trying to design a robot that's going to be fully functional underwater presents some unique challenges. You have six degrees of freedom to, to contend with. Um, you have to be able to understand science uh, principles, forces in motion, buoyancy, stability, in order to make sure that your robot is controlled, whether it's diving under the water or coming back up to the surface. The students who come through this curriculum, what do they come out of it with? Well, there's a big movement uh, called ABC, Activity Before Content. And activity Before Content, right. go ahead. And uh, this is a great activity to get kids excited and engaged, increase their confidence, um, expose them to engineering and science. But more importantly, you can use it as a vehicle to teach uh, science concepts that are uh, concepts that they might not be learning in either traditional classrooms right now or uh, concepts that could be taught in those classrooms, like stability and buoyancy. Are they competing with each other? No, and actually that's what makes our curriculum a little bit different from some of the other robotics curriculum, which usually culminates with some grand design challenge. Our curriculum is not competition-based. Students are encouraged to collaborate together, to work together, to share designs Teamwork with each matters. other. Yes, it really does. And they're given opportunities to showcase their creations. Um, there are a number of achievements that they can earn as they work their way through the various missions that make up the curriculum uh, so that they can demonstrate what they've learned um, in a variety of different ways, not just by winning some final mm. event. The, the, the female piece of this, the, the part that involves women, mm -hmm. women in fact are underrepresented. Mm -hmm. when it comes to science, science, technology, engineering, and math, right? Right. What but, are we doing here? But they're not underrepresented in water robotics. In fact, they're not. 53% of all of our participants are uh, female. Um, and I think that that has a lot to do with the fact that it is so engaging. We've worked with the National Girls Collaborative Project. The National to, girls, girls Collaborative, Collaborative Project. Project. What is that? Uh, it's an organization that helps to uh, get girls more um, into STEM, in STEM activities. education. Because we are behind. Mm -hmm. And you're working with them to get girls involved. So 53 percent. Right. It was part of our, um, the water robotics curriculum has been funded through two National Science Foundation grants. And part of one of those grant programs is to work with partners around the country to scale it up and to spread it to other geographic regions. And we've done that through a partnership with this organization called the National How many girls students right now are benefiting project. from the initiative? To date, well, there's been many thousands. Um, the ones who have gone through our particular scale-up grant, uh, close to 3,000. And we have data, research data from about 1,500 of those students that show that it really has mm -hmm. increased their interest in 
STEM disciplines and STEM careers. The demand is clearly greater. Mm -hmm. The need is greater. What do you say to those who are watching right now? I mean, I, I, I imagine non -pro are nonprofits or schools the primary source? It's both, actually. Um, we're in schools, we're in after school uh, camp programs, we're in summer camp programs. Uh, part of our research has really been to look at can we implement the program in both of these kinds of environments? That, that's where I'm going with this in the time we right. have left. What happens when the demand becomes greater and greater? How do you meet the demand? Well, right now, we're trying to spread it as best we can by training other organizations to implement water robotics can you Can you do that? Can, mm -hmm. Could water robotics actually be taught in settings outside of where you are? Oh, sure, and it's happening all of the time. We're, done this through our national scale-up program where we've trained uh, people in Texas and Seattle and Kentucky and Chicago and those um, either STEM faculty members or out-of-school um, camp program directors have learned how to implement water the robotics. Adam, before I let you out of here, for those watching and who are intrigued by this, what would you say the biggest benefit of this is longer term? for the students and, and for the larger society. Right, I think it helps with the 21st century skills that everybody talks about, the teamwork, the collaboration. Um, but how do we benefit as a society? Well, I think overall it, it helps make a more educated uh, group of youngsters. They have a greater awareness of careers in science and education because they have participated in a program like Water Bottom. And the need, and by the way, as more and more baby boomers who are in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, mm -hmm. and math, retire, we're going to need more we folks are. going into this, kids. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Right? right? Right. Final words. Right. Water Robotics is a great program to interest and inspire kids in, in STEM disciplines. This is and, exciting. And it was a lot of fun to produce, a lot of fun to make, and uh, it's a lot of fun for students to take part in. Well, Water Robotics seems to be the, uh, the wave. Excuse the pun. <laughs> it's happening yes. at Stevens Institute of Technology. And I want to thank you both of you. Um, we thank Adam and Mercedes for sharing uh, about Water Robotics and our friend from PSC&G to tell us all about it. Thank Great you. Great job. Thank you very much. Thank one on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by the New Jersey Education Association, Wells Fargo, Holy Name Medical Center, PSE&G, MagnaCare, Johnson & Johnson, and by Verizon Communications. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area.